was two or three, I taught him how to run the hydraulics and the bail processor. Uh, so I could hold up like uh, one is the number one hydraulic cylinder, two or three, because we just have three remotes on this 4450 John Deere tractor. So uh, when he was two or three, I can't remember what, how old he was exactly. I might be able to find that video and clip it in here. But I taught him to throw the bale in the bale processor while I was out here cutting the net wrap and pulling it off. So yeah, from the time that Merritt was two or three, he saved me like 30 seconds per bale about. Pretty good. sitting here editing this video or trying to make a video I thought that I should add that I'm very very careful with merit because I was with my dad all the time in the tractor just like merit is and my dad wasn't nearly as lucky um, I was a lot younger than merit I was like 18 months old my dad was bailing hay uh, the baler plugged up or something I obviously don't remember but I, he, I was asleep in the tractor with him because just like just like Merritt and every other rancher the kids in the tractor with you all the time and he got out to work on the baler and I was asleep and he laid me on the seat and I kicked the tractor in reverse the big tires on the tractor ran over my dad's pelvis and shattered it and uh, yeah I think he spent like a month in the hospital he still can't drive a stick shift pickup very well uh I mean he can but he if he drives a stick shift all day his he can't hardly walk um so yeah I just wanted to kind of insert this into the video that I we are very very careful with Merritt and how how he does things and what he's allowed to touch and what he's not allowed to touch and when and when he can't touch things and he is learning how to do things right he's he's very safe and in, in when he's operating this equipment so just thought i'd add that in there Make sure the bale's spinning, huh? The Good job. Good job paying attention.
think they're all going to come on Mother crossing the creek. I think they're going to come all on Mother. I think you're probably right, unfortunately. But we ought to be able to mother up a couple trailer loads of the whack and get them going, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. Gathering this flood irrigated field today and we're going to hopefully haul all of them up to what we call the Diamond Bar. We're going to take them to the south pasture of the Diamond Bar today. Uh, there's a snowstorm, like five inches of snow coming on Tuesday night. And it's Sunday today. So we're going to try to get them up there and get them kind of mothered up and tucked away. And there's a lot of projection where we're taking them. A lot more than here even. But, but it was probably, probably making all the farmers that drive by this pivot or this flood irrigated field sick to their stomach. But I still have cows on it. So it's time. Time to get these guys off and get some oats planted into this alfalfa because this alfalfa stand's really old. Um, probably farm it out this fall. Maybe we'll see. Get these pears off of here and haul them up to the diamond bar. They'll be a lot happier up there. Moment of truth. A bunch of the, the front ones are at the creek, so they might be coming unmothered right about now. The front ones might be wanting to turn around and come back. We'll see. Never know how this is going to work going down crossing the creek into the corral. They might all ball up at the creek and come unmothered and start running around and being naughty, or they might just kind of file right across the creek into the corral. We don't know. We don't know. We're not going to brand these calves. We're not going to tag them or anything, because unless it just starts raining like crazy, these are the cows that we've sorted off to go to town, our kind of older cows and stuff. So really good cows and hopefully we can keep them but if it doesn't rain they're headed somewhere else where there is rain. Alright we're gonna let Tate take these ones and we're gonna turn around and try to head them off if we're going the wrong way. There's a couple going through the gate already so that's good but looks like there's three or four going through the gate and the rest are trying to head the wrong way. There they go look at them going through that gate. We're going to go down here and cross the creek and make sure none of them try coming back this way. Hopefully they all go. Cavs too. <laughs> so get through the gate.
Load cows. What's up, slum dog? Rim Rocky 
Rocky Pond. Tell us about it. Rim Rocky Pond, the next station, Rim Rocky Pond. <laughs> Is it old or what? Dinosaurs were around that pond. Uh, Yesterday we couldn't get the pairs sorted out of the corral fast enough, and it was taking too long. So we brought them up here. We've got white-tailed deer are really bad about getting in the hay corrals up here. So our hay corrals are all really tall, woven wire fence, kind of like you do a garden or something so we just hauled all the cows and calves just kind of mixed them all up and hauled them up into that hay corral let them mother up overnight and then this morning we cracked the gate open and let them out they still come unmothered pretty quick because these guys were excited to get the green grass I thought they were gonna come unmothered at this pond because I thought they would want water but obviously I was wrong they're excited about the green grass coming up here Tate and I are getting them started. We'll see what, what the day brings. My grandpa told me one time that his dad told him at any given time when you're moving pears, about 30% of them should be grazing. Of course, he was probably moving 800 to 1,000 pears 15 miles, and I'm moving 100 pears half a mile. But the concept's still kind of there. That being said, moving pairs is kind of like uh, the Kenny Rogers song, The Gambler. You know, you got to know when to, when to hold them, when to fold them, and when to walk away. Moving cows is a lot like that, especially pairs. You kind of, you got to know when to push them, you know when to let them kind of do their own thing. And sometimes things just go so damn haywire that you just got to know when to walk away. Just like the gambler, even if you know exactly what to do, you could still lose. I'm not saying that I know exactly what to do, I don't have a clue what I'm doing, but even people that know exactly what they're doing, they'll still lose every once in a while when you're moving pairs. Well, reference, that's where we're at. Maybe this year be better than the last. He sold all his cows when the drought come about. Now he's knee deep in debt. Got nothing but doubt. Maybe next year be better than the past. But this cheap grass and clover is all taking over like a curse on the plains. Never get back, only this time Seems so real Has an unfair disturbance of blankets of range Took your last dime Caused all this pain, only this time Seems so real Species of plague on these plains, passed down generations, changed many names. We can have it. The storm made it. We're hanging out in the shop today. Got the drill cleaned out. Hopefully, a little bit later, we'll get the start cleaning up a little bit. Our shop is kind of embarrassing, it's a work in progress. But, Merritt, what's the camp stool kid doing today? Are you going to make it perfectly golden brown, or are you going to burn that son of a gun? I'm not going to burn it. I always just set them on fire and then slam them on my sandwich. Let it burn. It's 
not golden brown now, is it? Those marshmallows are pretty old. You might have to burn them for a little while to get them softened up. I forgot to start filming this when I started, but we got a little squall this morning. And somebody wiped out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight posts worth of fence. There she is. And just in case they want it back, there's all their exhaust. I'm gonna use my wife's high school pickup to haul these bales up the hill because the tractor will not make it at driving up that hill driving up that hill with a tractor will make you pinch a hole in the seat also my wife's high school pickup I always say is mine because I like driving it brand new tires so I like driving hers and saying that it's mine because it's got a subwoofer. Merritt and I like to jam out, right? Let's see if this video will do justice of why I don't bring tractors up this hill in the winter. I hope to God the pickup makes it up because, well, lots of reasons. It's sure gonna be awkward if the pickup doesn't make it though. back down this hill in the wintertime with a trailer. I've had to back down in the summertime when I couldn't quite make it to the top when the skid steer on. I've never had to not make it in the winter. Today we are going to be doing the cow video you can see and we are pushing bales off. My dad is I'm inside and the cows come in. There's the cattle. There's the bale. Bale. Tell everybody what's going on. I did. Okay. I told them we're pushing bales down. All right, let's go drop this sorghum one down in the trees a little bit. Okay, I'm videoing. What do you want to say, Dad? I don't have a whole lot to say. Hopefully I'm strong enough to get this sorghum bale off because it's kind of squishy. It's not hard like the alfalfa bales. They're a little harder to roll off the trailer. Time will tell though, huh? Yep. And this one's not going to roll very far. We're just going to dump it down here in this ditch and hopefully they kind of scatter it out and lay in it. Thank you. 